Our entitled neighbors refuse to move their car out of our driveway, claiming that they have every right to park wherever they want and that they shouldn't have to move it just because it's our driveway. And when my wife threatens to tow their car, our entitled neighbor then tries to hit my wife, only to then get arrested by the police. Here's what happened. So for some backstory, this is a story from years ago when I provided on-site tech work in a niche market all over America. The work is good and pays well, but the traveling can be rough. As I put in well over 100,000 miles a year by car. As I travel mostly by car, during the summer, we pay reliable types to feed the cats and water the lawns and take the whole family on the road. My kids get to see much of America and parts of Canada and Mexico, and we get to have fantastic vacations while I get to travel and still have the company of my family after work. The trips normally last three to four months, and these are honestly just great times. Unfortunately, during the winter, the kids have have school, and I get to be away on my own anywhere from two weeks to four months on a stretch. Some summers this happens too, due to family having other needs back in town, but then they sometimes travel with me for Christmas break too. At least my wife never has to hold down a job while I am working this job. This particular experience happens during one of those times that I am out of town and my beautiful wife is managing things back home. So when we first moved into this house, there is a great family that lives across the street from us. They are very respectful and just really great neighbors. They're upper middle class Latinos. They own a bar and they have fixed up their house in some very nice ways including building an iron fence around their yard. They have several nice cars, more than they can fit in their driveway. There are always two cars parked on the street in front of their house. But they also have a problem. For whatever reason, someone in the local community just cannot accept that a Latino business owner of a bar can make this kind of money without also dealing illegal substances. Every month, the police swoop in with warrants and drug-sniffing dogs and spend hours going through their house and cars with fine-tooth combs. Every month, they leave empty-handed with no arrests, with no tickets and no infractions. Absolutely nothing. And every month, the neighbor comes over to apologize for any disturbance this inspection causes us. They are mortified every time it happens. Every month, we tell them not to worry about it. We always reassure them that this says more about the police than it does about them. Believe me, if they had been doing anything at all, they would already have been caught. They appreciate our support, and as my wife and children are also Latino, we are glad to give it. Finally, they've had enough of it. They sell the bar and the house and move to a smaller town in another state with a larger Latino population and open a new bar there, and I honestly wish them well. This then follows a string of much lower class Latinos in their old house, and none of them live there for very long, and I suspect that there may be a landlord behind some of this. Some of them are genuinely nice people. We even give two broken down vehicles to one fellow who is renting a room in the basement. I decided I was never going to swap the parts that I wanted to do in the first place, and as a result, this man was able to rebuild a single working vehicle and now can travel out of town for work. So that guy especially is just a good person. But everything changed when Macho Rooster moved in, and he lives there for a long time. He is the owner of this house, and this makes him somebody, and somebodies are an entitled thing to be. He struts about in nice clothes and bling. This is his domain. He has declared himself emperor of the street that we live on, and anyone who challenges that claim will eventually rue the day. Almost immediately, we start having trouble with him and his family for parking in our driveway or in front of our mailbox. If the mailbox is blocked, the post won't be delivered. My beautiful wife will take the kids to school or just pick them up and come home to find that she has to park on the street. This rubs her all kinds of wrong, but leaving nasty grams on the windshield is not improving things at all. If they get a shot at our driveway, they simply take it. Weekends are even more fun. Not only is this entire street filled with cars related to this house, but the party and the music is playing so loud, all of our windows shake, including the ones in the back of the house. If that is not bad enough, it keeps up until 3, 4, or even 5 in the morning. He has bullied many of the neighbors with his mind macho posturing. They won't call the police with a noise complaint out of fear. We call, and they just turn it up even louder after the police leave. Yeah, he's a real class act, this one. So this day, my beautiful wife returns from picking up the kids from school, and their car is in our driveway once again. What's different this time is the young lady sitting in the car, waiting for something or someone. My beautiful wife parks in the street, gets the kids in the house, and then comes out to have a chat with the young lady. It goes something like this. My wife walks up 
and says, Excuse me, I need you to move your car off my property. You have no permission to park here. The young lady immediately gets an attitude and says, Excuse me, my uncle said I could park here so you can leave. My wife then said, Your uncle doesn't own this driveway. He can't give you permission to park in my driveway. That's not how it works. But this young lady didn't seem to get it as she just said that she has every right to park here. At this point, she then gets out, locks the car, and walks across the street. My wife then said, I can have you towed, you know. The young lady then turns around and says, you wouldn't dare. And this just goes to show how little this lady knows my beautiful wife. Not only does she dare, she has almost done it several times already and wanted to give them a chance to be warned. Well, now they've been warned. But before she calls a tow truck, my beautiful wife has a feeling this may escalate. So she calls the non-emergency police line and lets them know the issue she is having with our neighbors. When they get the address, they actually say, oh, it's them. She is looking for a number for a tow company. When there comes a knock at the door and it's the main man himself, it's Macho Rooster. And right now he is huffing and puffing. My beautiful wife is absolutely fearless. She opens the door and confronts him full on. Macho looks at her and says, how dare you tell my niece she can't park here? I told her she could. My wife then says, what makes you think that matters? You can't get permission to anyone to park on my property. Macho Rooster then puffs out his chest a little bit more. Look, little lady, you obviously don't know who you are talking to. Whatever I say goes. And if I say it, it happens. Now, after he said this, my wife actually started laughing at him. He is actually much shorter than her. She says, look, little man, that macho garbage doesn't fly here. Maybe where you're from, you're a big deal and that stuff works. But where I come from, the men I talk to are afraid of women, not the other way around. We know what rolling pins are good for and we are not afraid to use them. I've got a nice marble one in here. Would you like to see it? This obviously did not suit Macho at all. He starts sputtering near incomprehensible bits of phrases that include some snippets like, how dare you? As well as, nobody's going to talk to me like this. And so on and so on. Now, at this point, my beautiful wife takes a stance that is a quick reaction away from demonstrating a beautiful soccer kick to Macho's low-hanging fruit, if you know what I mean. Since she can see that he's about to use something other than his words to get his point across, and she is clearly ready to defend herself. But she can see something that he in his sputtering rage cannot, and that is the police car that had just pulled up behind his niece's car. So as Macho's fist raises over his head to somehow make some kind of strike against him, she decides it's worth playing the poor victim and taking the hit. Instead of striking the first blow, she cowers just a little and cries, and tries not to laugh while doing it. To her amusement, the blow never lands. Officer Friendly breaks the speed of light when he sees the fist go up. He's out of the car, over the hood, over the chain link fence, and has Macho's fist in his grip before it can take a swing at her. Very shortly thereafter, Macho is shown a new kind of bling, a set of nice silver bracelets, as well as a new ride in the back of a cruiser. Other police officers have now arrived, and my beautiful wife is the perfect little victim. She is so afraid of him, and what could he do to her and her kids? Her being there all alone at home, while her husband's traveling for work? She believes her performance was honestly Oscar-worthy. I find that personally very doubtful, but it's good enough for the intended audience. The niece is forced to move her car off of our property. Macho is not seen in the neighborhood for nearly a week. There are some apparently complicated issues that make this much worse for him, but the police are not free to disclose, and we honestly just don't care. For the rest of the time that he lives across the street from us, Macho never acknowledges our existence ever again. He also never allows any of his people to park in our driveway, as well as in our mailbox or anywhere near the front of our property. We only have to deal with all night music on Friday night, but the first visit from the police results in the music going off permanently. Yeah, we call the complaint in. Under his ownership, the house is not properly maintained. It eventually falls into disrepair, so Macho sells it. I suspect to buy another one just to run down. It's the opposite of flipping homes. But overall, I'm proud of my wife, and I hope we never have to deal with these people ever again. What a crazy story. Like, this guy really thought he could fight this woman just to try and get his point across. It's also simply not fair considering the fact that he was absolutely in the wrong and his niece should have moved her car right away. Like, who is he to say who can and cannot park in her driveway? He can't just make that call out of nowhere. That's just crazy. And how entitled do you have to be to try and intimidate your neighbors into basically doing whatever you want? Like, that's absolutely obnoxious. So hopefully the time in jail taught this guy a lesson that you can't try and strike other people or try and intimidate them just to get what you want because that literally will never result in anything other than you just getting arrested.
suggested. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Today, I messed up by spending the night with an old friend and realizing that I love him a lot more than just as a friend. And right now, I don't know what to do. So I met a guy by the name of Rob in our final year of college. We quickly became friends and spent some time together in classes and around campus. Nothing ever happened, but I always thought he was attractive and funny, and our personalities gel like crazy. Anyway, college ended, and we both went to universities across the country from one another. We had relationships, breakups, new jobs, and independent adventures. We spoke a couple of times a month over text messaging, and he eventually moved out of the country for work. Lockdown eventually happened, and while he was away, our texting increased, and we would eventually start speaking a couple times a week. And I always message him when I'm drinking or doing something that I know he would love. He always messages me back when he finds something I'd find funny as well, such as sending me a meme or something along those lines. He came back home to visit a couple times in the past year, and each time we met up and had a few drinks. The vibe was always immaculate and full of laughter, and being physically near him felt like I was at home. I've never told him that he was attractive, and vice versa, but if I'm picking up cues like I think I am, there is a mutual liking for each other. On Christmas Eve, we decided to hang out and do a pub crawl. I picked him up as his parents live about an hour away and because he's just visiting so he doesn't have a car he can drive. Immediately, things go right back to where they always are with us. Kind of flirty, no awkwardness, and just having a good time. Well, the drinks are flowing and at one point, he goes to the bathroom and another friend of mine who was also there said, he seems really lovely. Is this a date of some kind? And when they said that, I was immediately defensive. I started saying how we're just old friends, that nothing would ever happen between us. However, as the night went on, we were getting closer and a part of my brain just said, yes, you do want to date this man. The night was winding down, but we are both a bit buzzed. And so I asked him how he's going to get home. He said he would just walk or take the bus, which doesn't make any sense because it's a 20 mile walk and it's three in the morning. So there are no buses. He could have gotten an Uber, but the sure charge alone would be ridiculous. So I said he could just stay at my place. We got a ride home and stayed up a little longer drinking and talking. And during this, he's holding my hand and we have moments of just silence and eye contact. I set up the sofa so he could crash there and we spent the night together. And it's not what you think. Nothing happened, if you know what I mean. But we did snuggle and there was some spooning and forehead kisses. But honestly, the way he was holding me felt so good and natural. Like something I didn't realize I always wanted. During the night, I told him I'm so glad I met him. And I said to him, even though we don't say this, just know that I love you. He replied back that he loves me so much. He then gave me a big squeeze and pulled me closer to him and we just went back to sleep. In the morning, my family came into the room and I made the introductions. My family knew him from college and I do talk about him sometimes, so it wasn't actually too awkward. Anyway, we were still so tired and finally having access to an empty bedroom, we ended up napping just a little bit longer. I felt like there were times that he wanted to kiss me and there were times that I just wanted to do the same. By this point, my family are being quite loud downstairs and I realized that this can't go on forever. It's Christmas morning and I need to open presents and he needs to go back to his family. I convince him to get up and we have a short but lovely conversation with my family and I drive him home. We were both a little giddy with a hangover and excitement but we chatted and laughed the whole journey. We had a little hug as he got out of the car but immediately I started feeling like this is it. I'm not going to see him again for who knows how long as he's going abroad in a few days. The reason I think I messed up is that I am in love with this man and I just can't tell him. I know my Myself, and I would not be able to handle a long distance relationship and I also would hate so much to lose my friendship with him by telling him that I really really love him and then for him to just turn around and say that he doesn't feel that kind of love for me. I cried on my way home over thoughts of loss and how if I just realized how I felt sooner our lives could have been so different. I'm saying this all not knowing how he feels but in my heart I know he's a person I want around forever. What should I do? I mean honestly it's never too late to just move forward and say, hey, I like you. Because it sounds like you two really do like each other a lot. I mean, you literally spent the night cuddling and spooning and holding each other all night. Like, I don't personally know too many friends that would do that, unless there was something very intimate or close between the two of you. So I really don't see a problem with you approaching him again and saying, hey, let's make this more than just friends. And the worst thing that could happen is he says no. I really don't think he's gonna push you away for you saying, hey, I like you. By itself, outside of how you feel currently, it sounds like you have a really strong friendship with this guy. So you never know, this really could 
could be a good thing waiting for you. And you don't know if long distance dating would work out. Like it definitely could be something that could work in your life. So personally, I say go for it because I'm pretty sure this guy's into you and it would be better to just go for it and accept whatever result comes your way than to wait on the sidelines and regret not doing something in the first place. My coworker and I were falsely accused of making fun of a customer and his partner. And as a result, we got $0 for a tip after this couple was served over $100 worth of drinks. And I honestly have never been more confused in my life. So I'm a bartender at a small classy bar that sees about 45 people. We make craft cocktails and out of 50 drinks on our menu, only two are pre-batched because they have to be barrel aged. The rest, plus off menu drinks, are made per order. People in the city know us for our cocktail program and we get a good amount of regulars and recommendations because of it. We also do buyouts for private events. So needless to say, we are pretty busy. One time we had a buyout for an after wedding drinks occasion between 4 to 7 p.m. After the private event, we opened the doors to the public. People started coming in slowly, which was fine because my coworker and I needed a little bit of a break after that party. Our first customer were a couple in their 30s who apparently had been to the bar before but haven't been back in a long time. His face as well as the partner's face looked familiar, but I couldn't really remember them from before. They said they came for their partner's birthday. They ordered their first round from me, the second round from another bartender, and sort of bounced back and forth between the two of us each round. My coworker and I thought it was an easygoing interaction. He even made small chit chat with us while ordering. It was slow, so my coworker and I had plenty of time to clown around. He and I are good friends outside of work, and we like to laugh and joke around with each other. At some point, he and I started laughing. It's a small bar too, by the way, so it's pretty easy to see if somebody's laughing or if they're having a conversation over in the corner. We were talking about espresso martinis and how much we detest making them, and we were just laughing about it in general. Please also note that no one at the bar had ordered one, so we were not talking about anyone in particular. This was just a general statement, if you will. We also had a projector on one of the walls that plays black and white films in the background, and it's often a focal point for most folks. It's also sort of a habit to look at the movie when nothing is going on, so he and I were looking at it while we were standing next to each other and just talking. The couple from before also just happened to be sitting at the table nearby. Now, this couple's partner never came up to order. He himself ordered for the both of them each time. After about three drinks each, he finally closed his tab and took to his table. Typically, people just sign there and then leave. We would not have thought much of it, but when we took his tab, he said he heard us laughing about him and his partner. Since my coworker and I were still in a silly mood, and since we thought our interactions with him had been pretty easygoing, we just thought he was joking with us, so we laughed it off and made a couple of jokes about the espresso martinis. He took the check to his table, signed, and then left with the partner. We then looked at the check, and he wrote zero dollars on the tip line, even though there was a hundred dollars on the tab. My coworker and I were so confused. We genuinely thought he was joking with us. The next day, our manager talked to us and said that someone left a note on the Square app, which none of us knew people could do. He wrote that the bartenders were making fun of him and his partner the entire time. I had conflicting feelings after this. I was both annoyed and genuinely felt bad that two people thought we were laughing at them on a special day. I didn't care about the money. To me, it's more about our morals and intentions being completely misinterpreted as malicious. Even though this happened about six months ago, I still haven't seen them since it all went down. And honestly, I just feel kind of bad about the whole scenario. I really would not feel bad about this at all. I mean, you know the truth of the situation. You know for a fact you are not making fun of these people at all in the slightest. You are probably just enjoying your time of spending time with your coworker and just trying to joke around and laugh a little bit. Which, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. Especially in customer service. Like, sometimes you really just gotta laugh and have a good time just to make the day go a little bit faster. Especially if there's bad customers you gotta deal with throughout the rest of the night. So the problem is definitely not with you. It's with this guy and his partner who clearly are just super sensitive or something along those lines and they made some weird assumption without ever trying to clarify what was going on. I mean, it sounds like they literally just saw some people laughing and they made the conclusion, yes, they have to be laughing at us, which is honestly really weird in my opinion and simply just doesn't make any sense. So if I was in your shoes, I just would not worry about this. I personally would not want a customer like this going into my restaurant, especially if they're not going to leave you any kind of tip after you serve them well over $100 worth of drinks. Like seriously, they're the person with the problem and they should probably figure out what's going on with them before they go to another bar and ruin another bartender's night. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish
finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.